If you saw Quick Tip 186, you know what I'm doing in this Quick Tip 187. In these three Quick Tips, 186, 187, and 188, we're addressing edges, how to do edges in three different mediums. The lost edge, the soft edge, and the sharp edge. And we'll notice that there is a difference in the way we approach them. And so this one, we're going to be using pastels. So pastels are so different from watercolor, and yet we'll start out the same way, and that is with preliminary drawing. Now this pastel, I'm using a very lightly sanded paper. Um, and it, it's, it's a paper made especially for pastel. It's got very, very, very tiny grit in it, um, and so it makes the pastel flow on a lot easier. So, and I always like to use a pastel pencil, but you can ask questions about any, anything that you don't have, or anything that you don't understand. You can ask questions in the comments, and we can address them there, cause, because there's so many approaches available in pastel that... Uh, that w I, I'm, I don't want to make it about pastel because, and it's not about pastel. I want this to be about how we form these various edges in pastel. And so you can see I'm using this image as our reference, but I'm not going to be doing a pastel painting of a tulip. I'm simply using this tulip as an image uh, in order to explore how to get a lost edge, how to get a soft edge, and how to get a sharp edge. And so, uh, and so. But I, but I need to set some parameters for that. I need to set some edges, first of all, which is what I'm doing right now, just by setting up sort of a preliminary drawing uh, that, that, that sets the shapes of the, of the image so that I can work with them then without having to think about that. So there we go. Now, uh, that's, that's close enough. So just as in watercolor, and I do the same thing in oil, uh, when I have something like this, where there is, uh, where the background is darker than the than the foreground, I like to set the background first, and so and, and we can then form that shape in the negative. And we have here uh, sort of a blue green, uh, bluish green, very very dark background. And it's been photoshopped. I'm not interested in. I'm not interested in re in recapturing what the Photoshop's done, but I'm just using that as a reference. And what I'm seeing here is that the light in this photograph, and this matters as far as the edges go, um, the light is hitting about right here, throwing this part into shadow. So in that case, uh, just as I did in the watercolor, I'm going to make this area a little bit lighter. So I'm just going to start out with a, a relatively uh, middle value middle value pastel and what I'm doing here I'm just going to take this with my left hand over here I'm just going to now form the edge form the outside edge in that value but then work it I'm not going to work it all the way to the edge of the paper because um, that's not my purpose here now I'm just going to uh, this lighter value now I want uh, that's going to be uh, this middle value over there it's, I'm going to need that for forming the kind of edges I'm going to be after. I'm just going to begin kind of bring this down a little bit over here and I'll bring it over this way just a little bit and I'm going to add a little bit of blue to that because I see, do see that a little bit of blue and this is um, a blue that's in the same value range as that, as that uh, green. So I'll just add a little bit of that blue in there and that begins to give us what we need in the way of that. And I'll just take my fingers and because this paper it makes it possible to do this, I just kind of touch it a little bit, not scrub. If you scrub pastels, it, it just gets muddy. So I just kind of touch it just a little bit and um, get that sort of blended just a little bit there. I'm going to move to a darker green here and begin now with this darker green to form this bottom side where the shadow side is of the, of the uh, image. And the reason I'm doing that is because I am going to, just as I did with the watercolor demonstration, I'm going to put the lost edges in the same place as I did, in, I'm not the lost edges, I keep saying that, it's the three kinds of edges, but I want to use the three kinds of edges in the same place, the same location of the image um, as I did in the watercolor, and I'll do the same thing in the next quick tip with oil to show how the medium doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what medium you're working in, principles are always the same. So the difference is you're using the principle 
but you un you have to know how the medium behaves in order to make the principle work. And and so one reason I one reason I decided to do this uh, this little three part deal here is is to make is that drive that point home because people keep calling me a an oil painter. Well, I'm not an oil painter. I'm a painter. And I sometimes paint in oils, and sometimes paint in watercolor, and sometimes paint in pastel. But the, I always use the principles the same way. The principles are universal. They they always work the same way, and that's what I'm trying to, what I want to drive home in this little, in this uh, this three part deal that we're doing here. So all right, so I'm going to move a little bit faster now, and I'm putting this very dark on this side. You'll see why in just a moment, and I'm going to add a little bit of the blue back in here and pull that up into there and I'll go back with a with the lighter green in here and pull that up in there and right up against the edge right there now I'm going to throw a little bit more of that darker green I'm just going to use it to blend now when you in pastels you uh, it works better if you start out with the darker color if you're going to do mixing you start out with the darker color if you can, if you have a lighter color in there, you can use a darker color to blend back into it. But you'll never be able to get it as dark as the uh, uh, as the darkest color unless you put that dark color down first. So that's pretty much uh, good enough for the background. the all, The other thing about pastel is that you leave residue behind. If you don't get rid of that residue, um, it gets confused. And so, so I'll give that a little bit of tap here and get rid of that residue. Don't blow on it. If you blow on it, you leave spit behind and <laughs> just give that a little bit more of that. Uh, you, blow, you leave spit behind and um, and so that's another thing you have to deal with. And I'm going to take my finger here and very gently get these this kind of blended in here so that I can then forget about that. And this is a study. This is not intended to be a painting as I said before. A study to show edges. And the first thing I'm going to do is start this corner and let's create a lost edge right here. In the same place I created a lost edge with uh, the, the watercolor. So I'm going to start out with a I'm start out with a darker color than that. I think I'm going to, well, I'm going to start out with a blue. Now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to put just a little bit of this ultramarine blue right up in here like that and I'm going to blend it and a lot of times you can do this with pastel we can do it up with other colors too then I'll come back with this this um, magenta now um, I did not I don't have a dark magenta in pastels that will give me exactly what I'm looking at there so it requires color mixing so I'm, I'm mixing a combination of the the, um, the blue and the magenta color I have. Now, I could probably find on the market the darker magenta. The one I do have, and are the choices I do have, are also um, a lot less intense than what I wanted. And so I decided, okay, we'll just do a mixture here. All right, so I'm gonna pull that over in there. Now, value-wise, if I squint at that. Um, I need a little bit more dark here, so I'm going to use the blue for the dark. And I will just come back over and mix on top of it. So this is called layering in pastel, where you lay one color down and you come back on top. Now, this already has created a feeling of a lost edge. Now right here, if I take my finger, with pastels it's easier to do, with watercolor it's trickier. If I just pull these two together, blend them together, that edge will go away. And there we go. That's that wonderful lost edge that we see, that uh, that we can see right here. I'm just going to use this uh, same magenta color, and I'm going to pull down to form, lay it down. You can see by itself, it's a different value. And let's see. I've also used this just as an under under color for moving up there. Now there, I'm going to have a soft edge, and so I'll move in with a lighter color. Just a just a little bit of a lighter color and give that a little bit of lighter value. And I'll put, as I pull it down, pull that lighter color down over the top of that darker color. It also helps to give me the texture I'm seeing there. But but I want I'm going to create just a soft edge right here. And all I'll do is just sort of blend. I'll run my finger over just a little bit like that. And you see what happens is that because of the difference in color and the difference in value, both. 
uh, the edge stays soft, but it doesn't appear, disappear like the lost edge does here. So I'm going to go on the other side now, and I'm, I'm going to move it in the direction. Uh, this is starting with the darker magenta color. I'm going to move that in the direction of the shape I'm seeing. So I'll come down like this, right against the background. That works. And then I'll come here and I'll move it towards the edge, towards the uh, the edge of the petal. Okay, now I'm, I'm laying a foundation here for what I want to do next. And let's see, so I'll do that. And let's see, I probably, probably can do the same thing right here. This lays a foundation, which um, in pastel, offering, uh, often the layering of color will enable us to get what we want. So that's what I'm doing right here. And so I'm going to put some of that in, in that. And now, just a touch, let me just a touch of that there. Going with the lighter color here, the lighter, it's actually more of a pink, but it's in that same color, but it's a lighter value. Now what I'm going to do here is to pull that lighter color from the edge down towards the bottom of the image, right here, like that. And then I'll do the same thing right up here. I'll come on the edge here and pull it towards the edge of the image and leave the darker color at the bottom. Now I'm going back with a clean finger and I'll just pull like this and watch what happens. See that beautiful half blending that can give us the striation that we're looking for in that. And, but also can cre help create an edge right in here. And let me do this in here. And now what kind of edge do I want right here? I think maybe just uh, keep that kind of soft. And so uh, even though it's a very dark here and kind of a middle value here, I'm just going to kind of pull my finger between the two. There you go, right there. And that softens that edge. And while I'm there, I'm going to go ahead and throw in, throw in the stem. And we'll just sort of put, create a soft edge with the stem as well and let it sort of become a part of the background. Now I'm going to move into this part and do a similar thing. So I'll move in with the, I've got the lighter color in the, in the un, underneath. And so let's see now what kind of edge. I think on this one, I said I was going to create the same thing as in watercolor, but I see another potential here. So mm -hmm, go on, I lied. Uh, I'm going to create kind of a hard edge here. Now I'm going to bring the stroke down in the direction of the petal and right up against that pe this petal right here. And uh, let's see, let's do the same thing over here. Bring the stroke down in the direction of the petal, like that, like that. And while I've got this color in my hand, I'm going to do the same thing right here. And in the watercolor demonstration, I'll let that be the really, really hard edge where our eye goes first. So let's see now. Now I'm going to go in with even a lighter color. Before I do that, I'm going to reform. Let's move in with this one right here. I'm going to reform this edge. And I'm just going to keep this edge sort of soft right here. As And let that move down. And then I'm going to reshape, I'm going to reshape this edge right here from the outside. There we go, right there. Now let's keep that soft. We've got residue there. There we go. There we go. Blowing on it is the wrong thing. You can fan it, it'll go up in the air. Usually what I do is work, I like to work vertical for the most part, but what I'll do is just simply tap it and it falls to the bottom, the, the excess. But that's part of Part of uh, working with pastels is dealing with that. So let's see, what are we doing? Oh yes, I'm going to take my finger, clean finger, going to run right around this edge here and kind of soften it a little bit. Just keep that soft. Um, when you're working with um, images such as, such as flowers that have these sharp edges, keeping those edges soft is, um, uh, for the most part, in, in choosing where they go, where they become hard edges. Um, will be to, be be to the advantage. Right, so now, now this begins to sort of set the stage. I want to put just a little bit. Go back in here just a little bit more. Skip that just a little bit more. There we go. Presence right there. Now I'm going in with the very light, very light color here, and let's give this one 
just a little bit more. Let's go up this way with it. But in pastels, as in oil painting, in fact, in fact, with all the media, I find that if you allow the stroke to follow the shape, it helps to uh, helps to uh, interpret the stroke a whole. Uh, interpret the shape right. Okay, now there, I want the soft, soft edges between those two. Uh, I'm going to get this striation. I need a cleaner finger than that. Let's get just a little bit more color in here. This, this paper requires just a little bit more color being applied. So now I'm going to allow my finger to move uh, as I pull it in the direction of the shape to help create the striations. Now what I want happen right up there, right up there I would like that edge to be a little harder. That's what I said. In the watercolor one I kept it, um, forgotten what I did with watercolor. But let's get that edge, let's just see the difference. I'll make it very hard by going with lots of thick pastel paint up here. Having it very crisp against that dark, having a very crisp, um, having a very crisp light, strong light against the strong dark, so we get that dark a little bit stronger behind there. And uh, let's see, I think I might have to do that with my left hand. Let's just do this. Pull it with my left hand. There we go. Now I'm going to make it really, really strong, so you can see, really, really strong right behind there. And you see the stronger. The stronger I have those two together, I'm just fending away the, the excess there. The stronger I have uh, uh, of the edges, uh, the stronger, uh, the sharper I make the edge, the the more inviting it is to your eye there. Now you can see here in this example that uh, this dark right here against the lighter light right there is, if you close your eyes and then open your eyes, you'll see that your eyes are probably going to go there first because that edge is a really really hard edge so one more little thing right here now this is nothing near finished a finished piece it's not meant to be it's simply uh, you might say the beginning or a a study that shows you a little bit about um, developing edges so we have the lost edge right down in here we have the harder edge up there push that away again have the harder edge up there. Um, uh, we have the lost edge, hard edge, and we have the softer edges around here. And as we can, we as we would continue to develop this into a finished piece, if that's what we wanted to do, um, then we would continue to pay attention to those edges and uh, keep their character just as we developed them there. So if you found this helpful, why not take a look at our full-length videos at diamonds.com. You'll find something there. It might even be more helpful to you. And if you have something you'd like for me to do a quick tip on, leave your comment right down here, and we'll put you on the schedule. And there's your quick tip.